Hello and welcome by AI's Art Channel. My name is Elkian Wiesma and today I'd like to talk about a bit more about this painting and this uh, painting is already on my uh, YouTube channel in another tutorial but there I only used music and I didn't uh, record with voiceovers yet so I thought it would be nice to uh, pick up this painting again and talk about uh, more about the techniques I used and uh, the process I've been through to uh, make this painting and I mainly uh, use acrylic paints for this painting but I also use the airbrush on the uh, planets and on the background and um, I thought it would be nice to include a bird so I also uh, put in a bird and in a, on the bird I uh, painted uh, only with acrylic paints and also on the planets but also I used a, uh, the airbrush again uh, over what I previously uh, painted and that's uh, because of the shadows and the airbrush can uh, lay in uh, beautiful shadows if you ask me so therefore I like to use um, sometimes the airbrush again for layering those shadows but I will talk about that uh, more in this tutorial so I hope you enjoy and you see me uh, working here in my old studio We, uh, I moved uh, uh, to another room with my uh, yeah, uh, with the studio, and uh, I'm, I was in between uh, was while I was working on this uh, this painting. So therefore, you will see uh, me working on this uh, on this painting uh, with a different background later on in this uh, tutorial. But here I was uh, in my old studio, and also a, a bit of different camera setup. But um, yeah, I'm working on uh, what is uh, f the farthest away for the viewer. So I'm just uh, building up and I'm trying to come uh, it with each layer a bit um, closer to the viewer. So I'm uh, just building in some uh, shapes who, are, uh, who you can see or no, uh, you can uh, see nearly, but I'm using those uh, textures of I need those textures to give it a uh, realistic look. So therefore, I'm um, yeah was uh, quite harsh with those textures, and I'm layered over the the same background color with a bit of water, and uh, and that is uh, how I made those farthest away shapes. And I'm building up, and therefore I'm using also uh, stencils with the airbrush, who are uh, giving me more more texture. And also painted in stars and therefore I like to use a stiff brush and I'm using my finger and I'm going over those the, my finger with the um, of the the um, brush the stiff brush and I'm pulling my finger towards me so I get those splatters and those splatters are uh, the indication of the stars and it was uh, uh, needed a bit of getting used to because when you are using uh, too much water it will not work and when you are using uh, 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 not enough water you will get uh, much bigger uh, stars and it will uh, also not work quite well so therefore I had to uh, practice that a bit but uh, when you have the uh, getting the hang of it it, uh, it's, it does make beautiful stars and maybe you did practice that with a toothbrush uh, when you were uh, at the uh, in elementary school I uh, did it there but I'm uh, now using a uh, brush here with a stiff um, bristles stiff bristles so you can uh, get that nice effect of uh, stars and uh, quite a, a bit uh, of stars and you can imagine if I would paint those in uh, one by one I would uh, it would take some time so I uh, like to use uh, this method for that and now I'm uh, working on uh, the earth and I will have uh, a little bit of airbrushing going on later on when I'm finished painting on this uh, this uh, on, on the earth I will have the airbrush again to lay in that nice shadow you will see me do that in in a minute and the airbrush uh, can make a beautiful soft shadows and that's what I needed here to get that round feel of uh, of the earth and also how I'm painting in those uh, clouds are very important to give the indication of a round shape the uh, clouds are not just straight clouds and they are a little bit curved and that will give also the indication of the roundness of the earth and I used uh, a few different uh, reference photos for this uh, for the earth because I didn't have one uh, reference photo that I uh, was allowed to use so therefore I just googled uh, different photos of, uh, of the earth um, uh, yeah photographed this way are, are maybe Photoshop but it didn't, didn't matter that much I just had the uh, to get the general idea of, uh, of the earth and I uh, did work from there and once again your lights and your darks are very very important and also the a lot of different colors to get in those um, nice uh, depth in the colors there and the uh, yeah it will give it a more uh, realistic look 
And for the moon, I like to use uh, stencils. Uh, uh, yeah, you see me here working with these stencils, but also stencils I made with um, myself. I just had a piece of paper. I drawn in a few shapes and I used a uh, knife to, uh, to cut them out. And uh, I also using those, uh, yeah, stencils. I, you could say homemade stencils to give in uh, a few different shapes. And uh, this stencil I used also for the background, and I will have a link in my video description if you are curious on um, on what stencils I've used here. I found them uh, quite quite useful for a lot of different uh, different um, paintings. So therefore, you may uh, want to have a look. Yeah, give a nice texture feel on uh, like i said for different uh, things so therefore i'm uh, really really glad i have those uh, stencils i uh, see them uh, uh, with, with other uh, uh, artists also uh, quite often they are uh, very uh, often used for different uh, techniques and now i'm just building up uh, also the feeling of stars and um, i don't know if you don't notice that but when i'm layered in those um, lighter stars of the, those little yeah i should say circles with the uh, with indication of stars of, of uh, more lighter stars i also created more depth and my background did get uh, more further away for the uh, for the viewer and that's uh, because i get that uh, feeling of uh, different subjects who are floating through the uh, through the sky to the universe that will help uh, if you do different uh, kind of stars and different uh, bulbs who are in there and different shapes and different lightning and you you want to start off uh, with the furthest away because yeah well i i do that because i found it very um, much much easier to paint over the background and uh, getting um yeah, from the furthest away to, to the closest to the viewer, like the buzzard I'm painting in, that the lenses, because I then ha don't have hard transitions in the background and the subjects who are up close. And once again, I'm just trying to copy what I see and I'm building uh, up texture and I'm not painting in every little detail, every single feather. I'm not counting my feathers. I'm just getting in the general feel of feathers. And that's why it's very important to try to copy the shapes you're seeing and also using your different colors and especially the lights and the darks. And I'm uh, keeping it uh, a bit darker here. I have, um, I'm using the omelette titanium white and I'm glazing over that, but I'm not using the straight titanium white yet. I will keep that for my lightest highlights uh, later on. So I have something to lighten up my painting where needed. If I use that titanium white uh, 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 from the beginning when I'm painting and I didn't have um, a paint that can bring the highlights back into the painting so therefore i'm just avoiding uh, my uh, lightest colors in the beginning of a painting i'm just using them uh, later on and uh, only for the high the lightest sections the highlights and uh the omelette satin white is a very nice color to work from it takes layers quite easy and by that i mean that you can adjust the color of the uh, omelette satin quite easy with your darks and your lighter colors and uh, for this uh, bird, I use quite some different browns and it uh, layers uh, quite easily over that unbleached titanium white. So therefore I'm using that, uh, um, I would like to use that unbleached titanium white for that. And I'm just working on little sections at a time, especially when I'm doing fur and feathers, I like to work on little sections and build up from there. And sometimes, uh, yeah, most of the times I'm coming back on the sections I previously work on because I then noticed some uh, colors who are a bit off and I needed more darks or more lights, for example. But I'm just slowly building up those shapes and um, I'm doing that because otherwise I could get lost quite easy in all those feathers because there were a light, quite a lot of feathers and also different shapes. I'm now working on a slightly bigger feathers and um, yeah, I need those in there to get that nice and uh, realistic look. So and therefore I'm just working in little sections at a time. So uh, I don't make as many uh, flaws <laughs> and uh, if I do, I just can uh, cover them up quite easily. 
and that's just also personal preference if you like to work much bigger or, or more sections at a time you have our cars uh, free to do that but this is uh, the way i really like it and like i said if i do it a little bit wrong it's not that hard to uh, to get it right again i can easily paint over it because it wasn't that big of a section that i uh, did uh, did do wrong a bit and also if i do a bit uh, of wrong feathers it's not that important because i also need more texture there so those uh, little mistakes are really uh, i mean in some kind of uh, way are, are also helpful you uh, yeah like i said want uh, want to get in uh, quite a lot of texture so therefore uh, yeah why not use them and when you not overthink it and if you you uh create the um, ability to ch make changes if you don't like them and you're not afraid to make those changes you have much much more freedom to paint to to paint more freely you don't are uh, up that uh, uh, when you're paint because you know you can uh, cover your mistakes when needed and that's such so important when making uh, drawings and paintings i uh, really uh, discovered that over the years while i was uh, basically practicing, practicing every day now I have uh, i have more confidence in myself and i know that i can also um yeah cover my mistakes and i know if i'm a little bit off i can change it easily and uh, change my colors and all that kind of stuff and it's so so nice to paint uh, even more than in the beginning because uh, yeah it's uh, you you it's a sort of freedom you feel while working and that's that's also uh, oh, yeah basically uh, some magical feeling and you will get that uh, over the years and uh, yeah i really really like that and uh, like i said it will come with experience of course but uh, yeah i'm uh, really really enjoying uh, making art uh, every time and uh, every time i have the feeling that i'm really in enjoying it even more than before and i'm still just building up the last layers and i also like painting woods because you don't have to be that careful so if you uh, like making wood just uh, get in those brush strokes because the texture on the wood is very important so therefore i like to uh, uh, yeah paint woods it's very very nice to uh, to work uh, to work on and uh, this is the uh, end piece it is uh, a photo of the uh, original uh, artwork of course but i tried to get it as closely as the original and for this one it was a bit hard because my camera has a bit uh, of a hard time to getting in those nice colors and the nice transitions in the darker purples and the lighter purples so it's a bit off more than usually but this is the uh, closest who uh, on how it looks in daylight so I hope you liked the tutorial. So yeah, and once in a while I like to paint a bit different, not a realistic, but a surrealistic. And uh, this was one of those paintings. I really, really enjoyed painting. And um, to come up with this, um, this setting, this idea, I used Photoshop and I um, did um, get uh, made from different photos one picture and I used that as a, a reference photo. For the plans, I didn't have a reference photo, not um, a photo I have permission of, um, of to uh, use it as a reference photo so therefore I used different photos and came up with my own sort of plans my own sort of idea of the, how the plans would um, uh, look in my painting so if you don't have uh, the reference photo maybe you can use different reference photo and came, come up with your own idea that's uh, what I did for this painting for an exception of the uh, buzzard I used a reference photo of a, a great friend of mine and I have her permission to use her photos and her name is Anita Venema and um, she doesn't have a website yet but when she does I will have a link uh, in my video descriptions as well so you can check her site because she makes those beautiful beautiful photos and um, yeah like I said so that's one of her photos the background of the photo was completely different of course I think it was with grass and greens and I just only use the photo and um, this uh, pose and that was what I'm liking for this uh, what I did like for this painting so I came up with my own um, composition of this uh, this painting and what I also like to mention is this is a canvas is, is uh, slightly rougher than I used to so uh, I wa that was in a time where I was uh, testing out quite some different canvases to uh, find my own canvas of the, the canvas I, uh, I like the most I should say 
And uh, yeah, this one is a bit too rough for, for uh, my um, techniques and my uh, way of painting. I had a really hard time to getting in uh, those feathers and to get it in as photorealistic as I could because of the roughness of the canvas. If you have a smoother canvas, you can make more and nicely and easily uh, different um, uh, different uh, uh, details and uh, also the transitions between them. That was the word I was looking for. The transitions can be quite hard if your canvas is not smooth enough. So if you're just starting out, keep that in mind. A smoother paint, uh, canvas can uh, make a lot of difference in um, painting photorealistic and especially on feathers and fur. So, uh, well, that's it and done. I hope you uh, like this tutorial. If you like, you can follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, and on my own website. And if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this tutorial and other tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. And you can, can do that there, I think. Yeah, you can do that there. <laughs> so, uh, I hope to see you at uh, one of my next tutorials. Bye-bye.